I hope you enjoy tripping over my computer. I posted this as part of a comment in the nursing sub, but I think it might fit here too. Nurses for the most part, use a rolling computer that we call a, wow, workstation on wheels. Normal shifts are 0700, 1900, or 1900, 0700. I worked at 1300, 0100. Every day when I would come in, there would be a WOW pushed off to the side that didn't work for. Some reason that was saved for me, but no one had called IT for. Our IT was great, they'd come down within half an hour unless they had a hospital-wide calamity. But he don't magically know that WOW is down unless you call them. So every day, I would come in, drag said WOW into the nurse's station and call IT. It would usually take me 20 to 30 minutes to start working because I couldn't see any charts. My hitty boss threatened to write me up for taking too long. I pointed out that I was on the phone with IT, she did nothing but still complained it took me too long to start working. You got it, Karen. I'd come in, push the offending WOW into her office. That was so small the door would hit the chairs in front of her desk and leave it. I'd be on the floor at 1300. I wouldn't take a patient assignment, I'd just help everyone else with their tasks. Starting IVs, wound care, splints, etc. Within a week, we had three new WOWs that we were told Wei didn't have the budget for and a note about how. The entire shift would be written up if she found a broken one without an IT ticket. She was let go for many reasons after a year on the job. We did not miss her. Ride the train? You got it boss. So, here's the tea. A few years back, I had a job that required me to bounce between offices all the time. Company gave me a ride to roll around in but then my boss drops the bomb that I gotta stay in one spot for a while and gotta give up the car. They said they'd pay for my travel costs which is cool but I had to spend more time on the road than I would with my own ride. I asked for a spot to park my car since parking waste and public transport was out of the question, but my boss said no and suggested I take the train. I decided to take the train like a good worker, with my books and headphones in tow. It took three trains to get to work and my boss was shooketh when they saw my route. Plus, I dipped out early cuz Ehad the same journey getting back home. Karma swung in my favor though, I got paid for a full day just chillin' on the train reading my book, and the next day I got my ride in a parking spot back. Hashtag winning. Okay boss, I will hit my KPIs. This story came from five years ago when I worked for a small ITMSP company. We had four full-time techs, with the newest tech having about five years of experience and me being the most seasoned tech with nearly 15 years of experience. Between the four of us we managed about a thousand PCs and about 20 servers spread out over about 30 clients. None of us were assigned to a specific client, we would all take turns grabbing whatever tickets come in. All of our work was lump sum or contract work, so we never had to worry about how long a problem took to fix or how much it would cost the client. We had an account manager who handled all the billing and things with the clients. It was a dream job for a tech, we got to show up and do our jobs and not have to deal with sales or billing any. Other client drama. I not only had the most experience but was also the most self-motivated. I would often come in early and get started on the tickets that came in after hours, and I would assist the other techs if they came across a complex problem. Everyone, including the owner, referred to me as the senior tech, even though that wasn't my title. After two years working there, I decided to talk Toth owner about a raise. I brought all kinds of information to our meeting, showing that I closed the most tickets and received the most positive feedback from a survey we sent our clients. He agreed to give me a raise, but said he wanted to think about how much to give me and that he would get back to me. A few weeks later, he called a company meeting and announced that he had decided to change some things and that he would no longer be giving anyone raises. Instead, he would set up KPIs, key performance indicators, and the entire tech team would receive weekly bonuses based on hitting those numbers. I didn't like this at all as it meant my pay was dependent on the performance of everyone on the team and not just me. I found out later one of the other techs had also asked for a raise, so this was the owner's solution to pay us less. The KPIs were simple enough. If a ticket came in, we had to acknowledge it within 15 minutes to achieve a score of 100. If we missed the 15-minute window, the score for that ticket was zero. There were a total of 10 things we had to hit, including how long the ticket was open before we marked it as complete. If the total score for the week was above 90 we each received a $100 bonus. I saw major problems with this bonus system and issued my concerns with the owner. He got very annoyed with me and said, just hit the KPIs, cue the malicious compliance we all figured out pretty quickly how to gain the KPI system. We could acknowledge a ticket in the system but it didn't check if we had actually called the client. We would just email and mark the ticket as reached out to the client. 
a big issue is that sometimes a client would put an ALOW priority ticket and ask that we schedule it for some time the following week, but that would make us miss our KPI. So we would start hounding the client to schedule it sooner, and if they were not available, we would simply close the ticket. We quickly learned to hit our KPIs and start getting a bonus every week, however, it caused our customer service to drop, which is exactly what Ehad warned the owner of. During the previous two years, we had never had a complaint about our service, but now there were multiple complaints. Every week. This whole process added a ton of stress to us, as we all started to fight when someone missed a KPI and we all started to work late on Fridays to try and get in those last few numbers. After two months the owner finally realized he had made a mistake. He removed the bonus system, without giving us a raise, and asked us to go back. To how things were. At this point, I was so stressed I had already started looking for another job, and we had lost two clients. I was the first to put in my two weeks notice, but before I left the other three techs had all put in notice as well. The last I heard the company had lost over half its clients and the owner had to bring in several new techs, paying them over 20% more than I had asked. For my raise. TLDR instead of giving a raise, the boss gave us a bonus for hitting KPIs, even though that caused our customer service to drop, nearly costing him his businesses. Question my production? I work at a company that has a production quota each day. Some days the system is very slow and it is hard to hit that quota. If there are system issues we email the team lead, TL, let them know what is going on. But normally only if the delay is 10 minutes or more. This particular day, I got an email, why is your production low? When I explained I was told to pick up the pace or let him know about system issues. I sent an email every time my system had a lag or was spinning longer than normal. At the end of the day, TLSD to quit emailing unless it was a 15 line delay. Never asked about production again. So you want us to adhere to the company hierarchy? Sure. So I work as a mechanic in a sewage treatment plant, it's a very laid back job. In fact, 3 out of 8 hours was spent not working. I know that it sounds like if we were a bunch of freeloaders but it's just because the tasks we perform are as simple and we do our best to do them ASAP. Anyway, the hierarchy in our plant is quite complicated but the most important thing is that as a part of a mechanical department, our only supervisor on site is our master, at least I think that's the English translation law. Both plant manager and plant master are not our supervisors, yet they, as well as other workers, asked us to carry out some jobs for them, which we gladly agreed to do, even despite most of them being out of our range of duty. You know, welding racks back. Together, installing a new faucet etc. Most of the time we weren't doing anything else anyway, but sometimes we were preoccupied with our own tasks, still the plant master always told us that his tasks were more important and to just leave what we were doing for some other day. Due to this many 04 old tasks were left for another day, which because of constant requests were left sitting for months. Still it was always his jobs that had the priority. Now is the right time to address the tense situation we had with the plant master, he is best buddies with the manager, usually blaming all the shortcoming of his team on us, stuff like something not being cleaned, sick, stuff that's not a mechanical failure, stuff that's simply not important enough, or stuff that's beyond our competencies and should be taken care of by a specialist company. He also had this very annoying habit of rummaging through our tools, taking parts and using our machinery without asking. It's very annoying but whatever, it's important to keep good relationship and work. But then he dropped the bomb, he had the list of all our old tasks that were left unfinished. The list wasn't that long by the way, about 8 things, 3 of which were outside of our competencies, and said that the manager and CEO will be waiting in the conference room to give us a lecture and to take away our bonuses. The meeting went very roughly, it started with the CEO saying, you can say goodbye to your bonus this month, then proceeded to give us a lecture about the importance of our tasks. Then he kept blabbering about us, threatening, our master, plant master being the only supposed witness, etc. Etc. When the CEO was talking about possible solutions, the plant master did the worst calculation of his life. He proposed, adhering to the company structure and proper workflow. Well, we didn't want to oppose, since we knew what that means. We talked this over with our master. Now every time the plant manager, master want us something to be done we reply with, we don't take jobs in the corridors, we have our jobs to do, sorry, we cannot afford to leave what we're doing, we have it planned for today, or, does our master know about this? We cannot do anything without him ordering it, to be done. By now no one has been to our workshop for 4 weeks. No extra jobs. No side jobs. Nothing. Only 2 tasks a day, that usually take 30 minutes each with a team of 5 and it's all by the book, would definitely respect the company structure and have a proper workflow, focusing on our tasks, PS. Most of the backlogs were also due to stuff. Breaking down, 
which is mostly due to a faulty infrastructure. Most of the pipes are clogged with sedimentation from picks, packs and require thorough cleaning, rebuilding. But I guess it's cheaper to simply replace a pump which had to push the same amount of sewage through pipes that have narrowed be two times at this point. Those poor pumps. And yeah, the pipework and technology is the responsibility of the plant master and plant manager.